Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to the marketplace. Coming up, government reverses suspension of stabilization and recovery levy on petroleum products, a move expected to result in some significant hikes in fuel prices. Also coming up, official grid core report cited by Joy News shows a generation gap in Ghana's power sector causing outages ahead. We'll analyze the report plus the political cost of doing so as we near the 2024 general elections. Also this afternoon, Bank of Ghana cautions banks to comply with directive to provide monthly reports on fraud cases. We'll bring you more from the central bank's engagement with banks and law enforcement agencies. We've received from banks. And mind you, you know, banks are supposed to report all fraud cases to Bank of Ghana. Even if nothing happened, you're still supposed to submit uh, a mail report to us that nothing happened within the space. My name is Daryl Carr. Thanks for being with us. Details coming up. And thanks for staying with us, everyone. Now, government has reversed the suspension of the price stabilization and recovery levy on petroleum products. The move could result in another increase in fuel prices, but this time around by some significant levels. Yes, George, I feel with more. The National Petroleum Authority, in a letter to the various oil marketing companies and other players in the industry on April 3, 2024, that was yesterday, announced the reversal of the suspension. It therefore directed these players that from April 4, 2024, that is this morning, the oil marketing companies and other players should therefore apply 16 pesos per litre on petrol, 14 pesos per litre on diesel, and 14 pesos per kilogram on liquefied petroleum gas. This follows an earlier directive as captured in a letter from the National Petroleum Authority which showed that following the approval secured from the Ministry of Finance and the Energy Ministry, the authority was suspending the price stabilization and recovery levy from April 1 to June this year. It is not clear for now what has influenced this move as the suspension earlier on according to the National Petroleum Authority was to help reduce the expected hikes in fuel prices following the city depreciation and rising prices of crude oil on the international market. Well, the oil marketing companies had actually started increasing prices from Wednesday, minus this price stabilization and recovery levy. But they're now telling Joy Business that they are also going to increase prices again at the pumps even before the second pricing window, which starts from April 16, 2024. If fuel prices go up again, by a certain margin, it could trigger an increase in transport fares in the coming days. So be prepared to pay more for fuel and possibly transport fares in the coming days. Well, we've been trying to get some more clarity from the National Petroleum Authority on the decision to reverse the suspension of the uh, price stabilization and recovery levy. We don't have that yet, but we want to um, make sense of this latest uh, decision by the MPA with the executive director of the uh, Institute for Energy Security, Nana Moisi the seventh, he joins us on Zoom. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, like I indicated, we are seeking some more clarity uh, from the MPA as to why they reversed their decision to suspend their uh, price stabilization and recovery levy. Uh, but what's your understanding of uh, this move by the MPA? Good afternoon to you, Darrell, and good afternoon to your viewers. Um, the suspension of the price stabilization recovery levy came with an explanation. However, um, the reversal came without uh, any uh, background information. For us as IES, we know very well that the decision to suspend in the first place was not well thought through. Uh. And so, um, you know, reversing it, it makes it difficult for the MPA to come and explain. You, you reverse or you suspended this at a time that even the international markets and the forex laws, uh, when I talk about this, I'm talking about the dollar and the CD exchange losses have not been even computed. Um, you suspended 
this. It means that you knew very well that coming into this new month, we will see price uh, surge relative to petroleum products. And so you sort of cushion consumer. Okay, now I'm with you frozen there a bit. We'll try and uh, rework our connection with him. Hopefully, uh, we can hear him better. Uh, Nana Mosi, we lost you for a few seconds. You're making a point. I am, am, am I back? Is that yes, okay? Yes, you are back, yes. Yes, so um, I, MP has difficulty explaining to Ghanaians why they will reverse the suspension. But uh, note this, you, you recited it clearly that uh, we may see another increase in price as uh, against what we saw yesterday, because this time around, uh, the oil marketing companies are going to compute um, the levy or uh, factor it into the price build up, mm. and it is potentially going to move prices up, probably beyond 50 cities per liter for um, the leading products. Okay, um, well, we've been monitoring uh, the news uh, this afternoon. Obviously, uh, we are expecting that the, uh, the oil marketing companies will increase prices. We are seeing that take uh, effect. Some OMCs have started increasing prices at the pumps. But this also raises questions about the uh, price stabilization and recovery levy, the essence of it, doesn't it? Uh, because I monitored uh, the executive director of COPEC. He indicated this afternoon on our radio network that, well, we, the, it seems the MPA has run out of cash and the money is from the proceeds from the PSRL was used to uh, fund premix fuel. So bottom line is, is a cash issue. It could be the case, but uh, we ask, in the first place, we'll ask uh, the MPA to uh, suspend because you will need this same uh, levy to support the supply of, uh, let's say, premise fuel for the fishermen, a product that is in uh, short supply uh, because there is that old, the suppliers. At this moment in time, you rather need more of this levy so that you can uh, support the fishermen. There are, you know, we are almost in the fishing season. Um, we, are, we are in April. And so uh, those who are uh, chasing the crabs, the shrimps, the lobsters are in the sea. Mm. Too bad. Uh, and now we see frozen again. And yep. those who are also something like uh, what you call in the sea. Somewhere June, um, somewhere June, those chasing the herrings and the big fish will also come. So they will need more of this premise fuel. And the MPA itself will need this levy to ensure that there's consistent and reliable uh, supply of same. So it didn't make sense in the first place to suspend it. Okay, a uh, quick one before we let you go. What's the way forward on, on this matter? Well, next time they want to uh, suspend any levy or probably uh, increase or introduce new taxes, it must be well thought through and they must communicate directly and not attempt to reverse him because it distorts the market. I'm sure even for some of the key players in the OMC uh, arena, they will struggle uh, to add on this thinking and uh, having thought about the challenge their own customers go through this time around. And that means that they have to absorb that cost if they choose not to uh, reintroduce the levy this uh, window. Next time, it must be worked all through. All right. Now, we see the seventh executive director of the IS. Thank you so much for speaking with us on uh, the marketplace. We want to bring in uh, Duncan Amal, who is uh, executive secretary of the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, Ghana. And uh, Duncan, how do you react to the reversal of the suspension of the price stabilization and recovery levy? Oh, uh, clearly, like Nana has indicated, uh, this was a decision uh, whose reversal came too sudden, and I am thinking that clearly uh, something was not done right. Uh, but if you want to probe how the thinking of the NPA would be, uh, you can take a good look at the outlook globally. Uh, the NPA, seeded with all the technical hands you can uh, grapple with, would have done the analysis, would have realized uh, prices are simply going up. Uh, the consumer would need uh, some protection uh, put in there. 
And so they, as often would happen, would also go to government to uh, make a justification for, as it were, giving some relief. I suspect that is what exactly happened. Uh, they would have done their analysis, would have done their numbers, uh, would have gone to official dom to seek for some relief for consumers because they are aware that, as I indicated earlier, uh, the global refining uh, uh, numbers has gone down. That will mean that supply, I mean, figures would go, will go down. Demand, unfortunately, is increasing by the day. Uh, once that happens, prices will simply go up. This morning, I just uh, picked up uh, crude has crossed $90 already. Uh, what that means is that international market prices are going up. If you analyze the currency, the CD is equally depreciating at a very fast pace. And so if you put the two together, the only thing the NPA would be advising government to do is to come down on some of the taxes, which we have called for over and over and over again. And so I suspect that MPA would have done some consultation. They would have gotten a certain green light. But coming back to do the numbers again with uh, the premix bit, uh, somebody is now advising that please go back and collect that money. That clearly is my thinking. But anything other than this uh, would have just been unfortunate because the Ghanaian consumer at this point paying 15 Ghana cities plus for diesel, paying about 14 cities for petrol, uh, it's simply reminding us where we went, where we were, uh, if you recall, pre-November 2022 era, where diesel went to about 21 and all of that, and Ghanaians were forced to pay. It is just bringing back, I mean, it's looking like we could get there in no time if the NPA does nothing. Yeah, I mean, we are getting indication that OMCs have started increasing prices of the pumps. Anything you're hearing in that regard? Yeah, I can confirm that uh, the four pieces that went per litre for diesel uh, and uh, LPG have taken effect this morning. I can confirm the 16 pesos per litre for petrol uh, has also taken effect this morning. And so for OMCs that were selling at 13.99 for, as it were, petrol, uh, you are now going to have to pay about 14.16 uh, uh, for petrol. Uh, everybody that had to be uh, increasing is currently doing that adjustment. And the only thing it means is that I just bought fuel. I have had to pay more. Ghanaians are simply going to have to pay more. And like, as a result of this reversal. Uh, yeah, and like you point out, it's a consumer that has to uh, bear the brunt of this. Uh, the consumer right now just has to accept the fact that uh, fuel prices are going up. Well, I do not think that uh, looking at the current economic situation uh, prevalent in the country, most consumers are in a very, I mean, good fiscal state uh, to be affording these increments. And like Nana indicated, your report is also categorical. Chances are that transport operators, if they observe this trend of increases, would soon come out asking for more. So what it means is that your workforce or your, your employed uh, hands will take a lot more to get to work, will take a lot more to come back home. And what that means is that labor issues will also soon come up. Government may need to do the numbers, juggle with the numbers, and ensure that where necessary, some of the numerous taxes on petroleum products uh, that we can scale down on uh, uh, our base momentarily, uh, we do so so as to contain these increments uh, that are looming ahead. But, but what alternatives can the NPA explore uh, looking at uh, the issues that they have to deal with, like you mentioned, uh, to do with maybe cash to fund premix fuel? I mean, what alternatives can they explore? Is it Darrell, we have suggested time without number that to use the price stabilization and recovery levy to fund uh, as a were premix uh, is not good enough. If you need a premix levy, Go back to Parliament and institute a premix levy so that Ghanaians would know I'm paying five pesos every litre uh, to pay for premix uh, used in the country. They talk of subsidising premix, and sometimes it's as though we are paying for every cost of premix. Meanwhile, premix is sold. Some amount of premix gets back onto the, the regular white fuel market. Uh, ends up in your tongue because some of the, the people who would also live to would also find 
you know, dubious ways of doing their own thing. So we need to do the chicken and egg thing. One has got to pay for the other. But you cannot as well use the stabilization and recovery levy as a cover, a front, an excuse to continue to collect 16 pesos per liter for petrol, right? Darrell, let me do the math for you. Mm. If you do just 10 pesos per liter, with our current consumption of almost 460 million liters, you know, in a given month, you are doing 46 million Ghana cities. Darrell, that is just for the white product, right? And so if you are doing this, you add the LPG, you add the MGO, uh, RFO, and all of them, uh, some of which may not attract anyway. But if you add all of them, you are collecting almost 50 million Ghana cities, right? In the stabilization alone, if it was just 10 pesos, do half of that more, 70 million Ghana cities. Are we saying we are subsidizing our fishermen to the tune of 70 million Ghana cities every single month? That is conversation has got to be had. Do we still need to keep the stabilization? If we do, does it have to remain at the rate at which it is? Darrell, secondly, we are also asking mm. that government should take a second look at the, 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 the special petroleum tax uh, that it collects around 40, 40, I mean, two pesos. It should also look at the sanitation and pollution levy that it has slapped on all of us at 10 pesos. It should also look at other components of taxing that it has introduced uh, in recent times and see how they can rationalize these taxes to give some relief. Anything other than this, we are simply looking at a situation where uh, diesel could cross 16, 17 in no time. Petrol could also be inching up because, as I indicated, world market prices are going up. The right. city is also fast depreciating. The outcome is only what prices will go up again, Darrow. All right, uh, Duncan Amwa, Executive Secretary of COPEC. Uh, appreciate that you could speak with us this afternoon. Thank you so much. You're watching the marketplace. Uh, still with some energy matters, Ghana's peak demand for electricity has surged to 3,618 megawatts, significantly exceeding the available uh, capacity of 3,251 megawatts. Now, with an installed capacity of 5,626 megawatts, the nation is only utilizing approximately 58% of its total capacity, leaving a considerable deficit of 2,375 megawatts. We face a significant 1,455 megawatt shortfall in electricity generation uh, capability with gas supply limitations exacerbating the challenge. ECG, ECG, in its latest response to the PRC, says it's issued about 100 power outage notifications within the first two and half months of this year with a majority attributed to maintenance activities but beyond the economic cost of the current power rationing what is the political cost of not having the lights on as we approach election 2024 um, as always on thursdays it makes a bit of business and politics lead data and research analyst uh, with join us isaac kofeji joins me in studio for some analysis uh, happy you could join you can you could join me in the studio for this uh, so we're talking about power supply which yeah. is a major topic uh, uh, topical issue ahead of the elections. Tell us why, with just nine months of elections, we are facing power outages now. Well, so the main issue, I think, was actually predicted uh, by the Ghana Energy Commission, which they released what they call the 2024 Energy Outlook. And in that outlook, they pointed out two things that could cause power outages, or if you like, doom so. Mm -hmm. First one is fuel supply challenges. The second is plant maintenance. And yesterday, when we actually, you know, saw, cited that document uh, put out by the energy, um, you know, um, the, the, the current, you know, great code to the energy committee in parliament, we saw the confirmation in there, what the energy commission spoke about in December, that probably we did not do anything about it. According to them, as a country, 2024, we need close to 1.2 billion <laughs> $1.2 billion to buy fuel to, wow. to actually generate power. That is the magnitude of the money that we need to uh, use to buy fuel to generate power. This is simply because about 65% of the energy that we generate in this country comes from thermal, and mm -hmm. you need power. And so if you mess around with that sector of the economy, you know that it will have both economic and political costs. So this is what you said, right? I mean, as a country currently, 
as early or as recent as 2nd you know, April, our total installed capacity was around 5,626. This is the available capacity, and you spoke about how much we are consuming at peak hours. This is the deficit that we've not been able to produce. 2,375. It's, it's simply because of fuel supply issues and maintenance, these two, and 40, you know, uh, a power plant. Now, let's look at the power that we've actually lost or we've not been able to generate as a result of these three factors. First one is the maintenance cost. We are losing about 740 uh, megawatts. 40 megawatts. We have the inadequate fuel supply. That's 595 megawatt there's also faults uh, which are counting for 120 megawatt in total we do not have available 1455 that's like two regions let's say the the ashanti region let's say even three the ashanti region um, um you know western and even um, central region combined that's the kind of power that we do not have available. And I find it as a result interesting of, that uh, mm. because of a lack of maintenance, we are, we are, we are losing like yeah. 340 megawatts. So, so the maintenance going on at the moment, you know, where we've had to suspend the operation of some, some uh, um, you know, transformers and some planned maintenance that we, we, we actually predicted in December that we're going to do. Now, because of the over 1,400 deficit that we have, at normal hours, mm -hmm. Gridco and ECG will have to collaborate to uh, shed a load of 380 megawatts. That's huge. That's huge. And when we have peak hours, uh, just be sure that we will be shedding 505 megawatts uh, of power. And that is the kind of economic cost that we actually um, you know, have on our hands. Now, let's look at this because in 2015, 2016, a similar thing happened. Mm -hmm. And an estimate was actually done by uh, ESA and, and the World, World Bank. Bank. And they said we were losing annually close to $700 million as a result of doing so. Now, this is not only affecting governments, it's affecting businesses, individuals who are also voters. They will be voting in the December 7th election. And we all saw what happened in 2016. They say electorates. They can't forgive you for anything, but they can't forgive you for We remember, Doomso. don't we? <laughs> they will remember Doomso. Exactly. And, and just, just look at this. SMEs. And 885. We know SMEs will actually struggle during the, the Doomso period. They lost 250 million, million Ghana cities. Wow. Yeah. And 55 SMEs closed down. As a result, so just imagine you move from Doomso, there was COVID. And this is just what we know. <laughs> this is what we know. This yeah. was possibly has been reported. Yeah. This could be the minimum situation. So have you access of what could be the maximum situation and the total amount or the real amount that SMEs and businesses are, are, are losing? Now, beyond you know, the, the economic angle, there's also um, you know, the, the political angle where we said that in 2016, when there was doom, so we also, they, we are not saying that is the only but holding on other factors constant, that was a key determinant. People were tired of it, and, 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 and we saw the, the real impact, not just on, on, on businesses, but also individuals. Yeah. But right now, there's a blame game going yeah. on in the political circles. This part is saying, well, you didn't do better when you were in power, mm -hmm. so you can tell you how much uh, this is um, a major topic for the elections. And so... I'll leave that to you to tell us. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> if you look at, I mean, the NDC saying, well, we did much better. Mm -hmm. Then be saying that you were no better. I mean, what's the debate in the political sense? Well, for, for electorate, I mean, they don't care who is to be blamed. All they care is what they are feeling and how it will impact how they will vote. Mm -hmm. And so you can't play around with a crucial, you know, sector like the energy. Because, I mean... You remember that the central bank's governor said that the governor said that the six hundred million dollars, the second tranche that we received from the IMF, we used more than four hundred million dollars mm. to pay energy sector arrears. Wow. So if we've been able to do that, why do we still have problems getting fuel? Why do we still have problems maintaining the plant? And why do we still have forty um, you know plants where in total we are losing more than one hundred and forty thousand you know, megawatt. Now, we also have an, another angle, which is the fuel supply. We know because of our debt situation with Nigeria, don't, they are not willing to do business like the way they used to, and that is really affecting us. Yesterday, we saw some of the plants, and you'll be amazed how 
they are stuck in terms of gas. Some plants can last for only 13 days, some just two days, some not, no fuel, and, and they can't even produce at all. So that is where we are as a country, and electorates will possibly be looking at this and see how the government yeah. will solve this. Top five issues uh, if it comes to electricity. Where, where do you think power supply will fall? Power supply, I think, currently will be number one. Number, number two one. will be the debt restructuring. Okay. That's to me, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac Opeje, lead data and research analyst with uh, Join News. Thank you so much for coming through. Now, the Bank of Ghana is cautioning banks to comply with the directive to provide monthly reports on fraud cases. The central bank said this is to aid in consolidating measures to check or to track fraudsters within the financial sector. According to Head of Financial Stability at the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Kwesi Oseyewa, the central bank will continue to collaborate with banks to sanitize the sector. He spoke to Joy Business at a workshop in Accra. The Bank of Ghana said it will deepen effort into the swapping of mobile phone numbers of customers of some banks fraudulently and withdrawing money from their bank account. Dr. Kwesi Yabu indicated to Joy Business that the bank is committed to ensure sanity within the financial sector. Uh, the, the figures I gave with respect to 2023, the, from the fraud data we've received from banks, and mind you, you know, banks are supposed to report all fraud cases to Bank of Ghana. Even if nothing happened, you're still supposed to submit uh, a mail report to us that nothing happened within the space. So every month, banks are supposed to submit these reports to us. And from this report, uh, the, the, the fraud that we've identified associated with same swap is what I mentioned. Uh, from the bank side, we've, we, we've had uh, 15 reported cases. And the value at loss, like I said, is about 4.8 million Ghana cities. On the PSP space, we've had about 14,655 cases. And the value at loss, like I said, is around 16 million. So, you know, for us, even if it's one fraud, it's important to us. I uh, would wish, much as it may sound unrealistic, that there isn't any fraud at all. But any fraud is important to us because it speaks to the uh, concerns that consumer would have for the financial or the banking space. So we are always concerned about it. All right, and that's the marketplace. Thanks for watching, everyone. There is more news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Thanks for watching.